Hello people and welcome to Crypto Exposed. Ripple CEO expresses surprise about XRP ETF timing, expects product to attract capital into XRP. Interesting. Okay guys, let's get into it. So we're talking about Brad Garlinghouse here and who's on the Thinking Crypto podcast. And um, it's funny because what Brad Garlinghouse is saying here is exactly what I said uh, myself in regards to, you know, the ETFs when it was filed before myself, right? And so, you know, we had a few influencers who were saying like, it, it doesn't matter um, whether the SEC appeal or not in regards to the ETFs. And I, I actually expressed in my video about it why I think it does matter. And um, I, I'll obviously get into this a little bit more now. And it seems like Brad Garlinghouse kind of agrees with what I'm saying here. And so it's just interesting to see that he has the same you know thought process as me but um look let, let's let's get into it so we've got brad garlinghouse talking about the uh about the etf filings and um first and foremost we'll get into what he's saying about the positive first and foremost he said you know what he's surprised about the timing of the etfs he's not surprised in terms of the outcome so what does he mean about that what he's saying he's not surprised that etfs are now coming um into demand like he's not surprised that that companies are now trying to file for xrp etfs and i agree with that like i said myself listen you know I, I think it's you know inevitable that an xrp etf will come at some point it's a top 10 crypto it's one of the first um cryptos in existence along with bitcoin and ethereum um it's managed to stay around for as long as it has within the top 10 even during the lawsuit um it's got a huge amount of volume going on in, in different countries like south korea etc so it does, it's got a lot going for it basically right and so you know, I said that like it's inevitable that an ETF will come, but you know, I said myself at the time, I didn't think one would come this year. And I'll, I'll get into this a little bit more as to why I said that in a moment. Um, but yeah, like Brad Garnes is saying, you know, it was inevitable that XRP ETFs would come over time. And yeah, I, I completely agree with that. And he's basically saying like the true benefits that this would have for the, uh, for the ecosystem. I completely agree. Like, you know, we've seen what the ETF did for Bitcoin. Um, it was a great, you know, part of momentum. And although it wasn't able to sustain the momentum in terms of like the price action from it, like at the end of the day, that was still a massive thing because it, it like broke records when the Bitcoin ETF came out. It, you know, it broke trading records. So it shows you how much of a big deal it was. And if we was actually in like a bull market territory, like we was in a bear market at the time. If we was in bull market territory, I, I think that could have been way more substantial way more substantial but you've got to understand like when you're talking about bear market territory it's not just we're in a bear market what you've got to understand is it, it means that like there's things going on in the world as to why people are not really spending money in terms of like investing and stuff like that right so you know when your food is way higher your gas slash petrol is way higher you know all your expenses are way higher you haven't got as much free money to just put into other things like you're not going to be able to invest at that time and so like you've got to understand like these are the kind of things that impact you know the height of what things can get to and i think that could have played a big role as to why uh bitcoin didn't continue to go higher um when the etf was launched but it was still a massive success and so i think it will be a massive success for xrp as well so you know let's get into why he was saying he was surprised about the timing um he's saying he's surprised about the timing because obviously at that time when the first etf was filed by bitwise um they were still waiting for the appeal to see if the uh, SEC would appeal the lawsuit. And I said this in my video when they filed the ETF. I said, I'm surprised they've done this. I, I completely agree with Brad because it it's not about as to whether they can still file for an ETF or not. That's not the, the point that I'm making. It's not a thing where they'll say, well, we've done the appeal. So we have to um, we have to reject the ETF. But what I'm saying is, if they filed the appeal, which they did, it shows to me that they've still got the vendetta against Ripple. And so just logically speaking, why are they then going to approve the ETF, right? Like to me, this appeal just shows me, Gary Gans is not over this lawsuit. He's not over the defeat. He's not over what's happened. He still wants to kind of, you know, try and attack Ripple as much as he can. So do you really think it's likely that he's going to approve these two ETFs that have been filed now? I think it's highly unlikely. And and look, I would love to be wrong about this. I really hope I am. You know, like it would be great if he does approve the ETFs. But to me, the likelihood of this now knowing that they've put in the appeal 
I just, I just don't really see it, you know, I really don't see it because to me, it shows that they're still really angry with Ripple and they still want to try and punish them as much as they can. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So the, the idea of them then approving the ETF, even though they're appealing the, uh, the lawsuit. And, and to be honest with you, um, they've done a lawsuit against an exchange and it kind of sounds in that lawsuit like they're still trying to argue that XRP is a security again. Like it's like they're trying to go back to that idea of trying to claim it as a security again, which is probably the thing that they do where they like to talk out of both sides of their mouth, where they say, oh, you know, we're not necessarily saying it is a security, but it embodies a security where they're basically saying it's not a security, but it is a security. So that's probably what they're trying to do. But this is what I'm saying. Like when people are saying, oh, you know, the, the SEC are going to, you know, that they can't just reject it on that basis. They don't have to say that's why. They don't have to say, hey, we're going to reject it because we're doing the appeal. No, but they could just make up any reason they want and reject it. Now, look, um, I said this in my previous video again. Could, you know, Bitwise file a lawsuit against them for this to try and get this done? Yeah, they can. But the point of this is, how long is that going to take to do, right? Like at the end of the day, that could like take six months to a year. And this is why I was saying like the SEC impact on, 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 of this appeal, I think it does affect XRP's potential. And this is why I said it puts a ceiling on it because here's a great example of it right now. Let's say the SEC reject the, uh, reject the ETFs, right? Okay. So let's say Bitwise now say, okay, we're going to, um, we're going to sue the SEC because we want these ETFs and we think that they keep rejecting them unfairly, right? Let's say that takes a year. Well, what if we have the alt season within the next, let's say four months. So let's say within four months, the, the alt season is over. Well, those ETFs could have been a huge driver of value for XRP at that point. But if the ball run is over before the lawsuit uh, even starts, well, that's basically suppressed the price, right? Because you've suppressed an opportunity that XRP had for global adoption for more people to get involved in XRP. So that could have drove XRP to even higher highs, right? Like it could have got even higher. So this is not me saying I don't think XRP won't perform in the next bull run. I think it will personally, we will see for sure because I, I don't know, but I think it will. But what I'm saying is if things like this weren't going on, like the appeal, like the ETFs might have just got approved at that point, And then it could be that that could have been a huge driver of value for XRP's price. Do you see what I'm saying? And this is where I'm saying I do think the appeal does affect XRP. I do think it could potentially put a ceiling on how high XRP can go. So I still think it will hit like a new all time high and do well. But I will still question like, I wonder how high this could have gone had the SEC not have appealed. That, that's something that I'm always going to question now. But we will see. Look, I could be completely wrong and the SEC actually approved these ETFs. I, I would be very surprised if they do. You know, I'd be very surprised considering the fact that they've done this, uh, they've done this appeal now but it's possible you know it is possible so i hope i'm wrong i really do but logically like seeing how gary gensler has been acting and like just knowing how much he hates the fact that he's lost his lawsuit and the fact that they're appealing i just don't see it. i just don't see why they're going to try and do ripple any favors because it seems to me the fact that they're appealing they're still trying to punish ripple as much as they can and you know brad himself has said he's really annoyed with the fact that they've done this he's really not happy about it so you know like he can see the frustrations, you know, you can see that Ripple are really getting angry um, with what they're doing because they're just, they're basically just trying to crush them in any way possible. You know, they're just trying to stagger this out for as long as they can because they've got unlimited resources and it's Ripple who are having to keep paying to defend themselves. So they're just trying to stagger the process as long as they can because this could be stopping institutions from wanting to work with Ripple, right? They could be like, until you get this part of it sorted out, the institutions, like we're not going to do business with you guys because it's too up in the air and we don't need the SEC then coming after us. Do you know what I mean? So we'll just wait until this is all sorted. So this is just delaying it even more for Ripple to just move on and continue to do business. And so this is what I mean when I say I think that the lawsuit could have an impact on XRP's price. Not said I don't think it could not hit a new all-time high anymore. I still think it can in the bull run, but I do think you know, let's just say XRP got to like $10. My thing would be, well, is it possible that if like, you know, the appeal hadn't happened, it could have got to $15 or $20 maybe. Like that's where I'm at with it. So, you know, we will see, but I still think XRP is going to do well. So I'm not like that concerned. But yeah, I, I agree in terms of like everything that Brad's pretty much said here. Like I'm surprised about the timing. Uh, to me, I would have said like, why not just wait until next year 
because one you then know who's in office because i heard that even if um even if kamala harris like w was to win even if she was to win they would still change the um change the person in office they would still change gary gensler so it could have been that they replace Gary Gensler with someone who's more crypto friendly anyway. And that person comes in and just drops the lawsuit, right? So it's that kind of thing like where why not just wait to see what you're dealing with? It's not to say they can't put file the ETFs. No, that that's fine. They can. But it's like we all see what Gary Gensler is doing here. We all see what the SEC have done. So is it really, it does it really make sense to file the ETFs right now? That's all I'm saying. I, I would have just waited at least to see if the appeal comes through. Because if you see the appeal comes through, it's like, okay, so what's the likelihood this is going to get accepted? Probably not. All right, we'll just wait till next year. We'll just file next year. That That's why I thought it'd be more likely we'd see an ETF next year more than anything. But hey, I I'm glad to see it at least because it lets me know that the demand is there. And that's great. It lets us know that, yes, there is a demand there for an XRP ETF. So that's really good to see. And it should mean that hopefully by next year hopefully we should have an etf right um as i say i don't know how long lawsuits take if the sec reject it and you know bit was up to file a uh, look to file a lawsuit in regards to it but would it be within a year i i, I think so maybe hopefully I, I i don't know for sure but yeah it's looking promising either way so you take the good with the bad right it's just good to see that there is a demand there for an etf and yeah i agree with brad i'm surprised about the timing but i'm not surprised about the fact that they you know are asking for an etf like it doesn't surprise me that people are at that point where they want one and i do think there will be one coming in the end regardless you know there's only so long they can keep kicking the can down the road eventually they'll get sued etc and they'll be forced to have to give up because that's what happened with the bitcoin etf it's not that they wanted to um approved the etf it's just that they got sued to a point where they couldn't keep doing it anymore they couldn't keep rejecting it anymore so that that's really what happened they kind of got forced so that's eventually what will happen with xrp if they just keep you know doing the same tactics so it will come it's just a matter of when really but we'll see what happens but overall this was good to hear from brad and yeah i overall agree with everything he said here but this will be great for xrp i think this could do something magical for the xrp ledger and in terms of just attracting price, I really think that could be a big deal. Thank you very much for watching this. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And hit that bell. Take care.